Peace and blessings to the 12 tribes of Israel. Peace and blessings to the 12 tribes of Israel. Today I'm going to deal with a topic called color does matter. Color does matter. Now I've, I've, dealt, I've done Bible shares on this before. So I thought I'll just revisit it. Because um, I know within the Christian church. They say oh color doesn't matter. When you say well these people in the Bible are black. You know you say Christ is black and the Israelites are black. Oh color doesn't matter. And, and people get very kind of like, they, they get so kind of like, I know better than you. You know, you see, I know better than you. You see, you look at things in a carnal way. You see color and I don't see color. You know, color doesn't exist. We're all one in Christ. We're all one nation. We're all one race of people. There's no such thing as different races of people. We're only one race in the human race. You know, people get very, very kind of very christianized you know because their, their their brain is is kind of just is kind of locked off to everything else it's like i, I believe that the most high has deluded them into thinking a particular way and they're quite happy to sleep they, they're quite happy to be slumbering and sleeping away and they don't want anybody to say anything that rocks them a bit too hard to wake them up right now color does matter and the simple reason why color matters is because it's in the Bible. Why does color matter? Color matters because it's in the Bible. So if, just think about all the millions of things that the Lord could put in the Bible that happened. Right? All the millions of things. All the things that happened here on earth that the Lord could have put in the Bible. Of all these things, the Most High chose the, prophet, the prophets to write on color. Why? Because it matters. Because he knew that people would say color doesn't matter. You see. Now, if you were to look up the prophets in the Bible, like you were to go Google the prophets, the images of the prophets. So you were to look look at the images of Peter and Paul and John and 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 Christ and everybody. Anybody has who has anything to anything to do with the Bible or in the Bible, the images that you would get would always be white. Why? Because someone or a bunch of people went through the records of the Bible and saw that the images were supposed to be black. But then they thought, do you know what? I'm going to cover all these images and make them white. So color matters to somebody. But unfortunately, to black people, color doesn't matter. Right. And color should matter to you the most because you're at the bottom, you see. You need Christ more than anybody else. That's why it should matter to you, right? So first of all, let's go to 1 John. So we're going to go to the, the scriptures whereby there is color in the Bible. And then hopefully we'll give some edification. So I'm not going to make a super long video. So first, let's go to 1 John. And we're going to read from 1 to 3. Be, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. So how do so basically let's go over one again beloved believe not every spirit but try the spirits whether they are of God because many false prophets are gone out into the world so how would we know if someone comes to you and says I am Christ how would you know if he really is Christ by looking into the Bible to see right and then you can, can discern him in your spirit to say he's not Christ right Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. So if he confesses, right, i.e. if he confesses that he is Christ and you look in the Bible and see, well, he represents the characteristics of Christ, then you could now say for sure this is Christ. So that means him in the flesh. Him in the flesh means his color, right? So that's just a different way of saying what he looks like, his color, right? And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. So if you confess that he never came in the crest, nobody, he never came in the flesh, nobody really saw Jesus, which is a lot of what these Christians say, that nobody saw Jesus, nobody saw Christ, nobody saw Yahweh Shai. That's what they say. 
And that's not true. Right? Let's read three again. And every spirit that confesses it not that Jesus has come in the flesh is not of God. It means that you're not of God. So if you say that nobody saw Christ, it means that you're not of God. Right? You're lying. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist. That's the spirit of Satan. It just means that you're worshipping another God. You not look, the Bible says in the day of judgment, the Lord, the Lord is gonna He's gonna look at Israelites and they're gonna go, Lord, Lord, I did this and I did this in your name and I did this, and the Lord is gonna say, Get away from me, I never knew you. You who work iniquity. In other words, you just love sin. Let's carry on. Whereas ye have heard it it should come, and even now are ready in the world. So if Caesar Borgia or someone that looks like Caesar Borgia says, well, I am Christ, then you could legitimately say you're not Christ. Why? Because you, you're not black. You don't have woolly hair. But anyhow, let's go to, let's go to that scripture next. Let's go to Revelations 1.1. 1, 1. The revelations of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant David. Uh, Dave, not David, John. Right, so let's carry on to two. Who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that read it, that, that they that hear the words of this prophecy keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. Right, so I, I basically went to Revelations 1 from 1 to 3. Right, the crucial thing is the revelations of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. He sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. So, John was given this revelation of Jesus Christ, hence the word revelation, the, hence the book Revelation. Who bear, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Right. So he is, is telling the whole wide world what he saw. Right. Three. Blessed is he that read it. So blessed is he that read it and they that hear the words of his of this prophecy. So if you read and you hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written. So you need to keep the things that are written. For the time is at hand. So. John was instructed to write the things down. Blessed he that read it and they that hear the words of this prophecy. Prophecy. So John was instructed to write the words down. Right. So let's now go to first revelations 14 to 15. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. So this is the revelations of Christ. This is what he looked like. Right. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they were burnt in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. So let's go back up to, let's, go, let's read from 13 actually. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the son of man, clothed with a garment down to his foot, and gird about the paps with a golden girdle. Right? 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So they were white, and they were also woolly. As white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. So his eyes were red. Right. 15. And his feet like unto fine brass. So, so now it goes on to talking about his complexion. So his feet was like unto fine brass, brass. Which means burnished brass. Or it means polished brass. It just means like a copper coin. So like a penny. Right. So it's that reddish brown colour. As if they were burnt in a furnace. So they looked reddish. He looked reddish brown. But he also looked like he was burnt in a furnace. So he looked like a black man. Because if you put anything in the furnace. And it and it gets burnt. It turns black. And his voice is the sound of many waters. So he had a deep commanded, commanding voice. Like woo, 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 woo. That's his voice. So he had a very deep voice. And a very commanding voice. At that. The voice is the sound of many waters. Right. So that was the description, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which John was instructed to write in a book so the whole world can get to know it. OK, so that was Christ in the flesh. So let's now go to Solomon. So we're going to go to Solomon. So on that token, if someone were to come looking anything that didn't look like this description, then we know that that's not Christ. That's somebody else. Right. You know, we instinctively should know that that is not Christ. That is somebody else. Right. 
So we're now going to go to the Song of Solomon and we're going to read from 1, chapter 1, and we're going to read from 5 to 6. I am black but comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. Look not upon me because I am black, because the sun heart looked upon me. My mother's children were angry with me. They made me the keeper of the vineyards, but mine own vineyard have I not kept. Right, so... So Solomon was a black man and he looked even blacker in the sun. Right? <laughs> so I am black but comely. So Solomon was a black man. Oh, ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. So he's admitting he's a black man. Look upon me. Look not upon me because I am black. Because the sun heart looked upon me, my mother's children were angry with me. They were made me the keep of the vineyards, but mine own vineyard have I not kept. Right. So he's just basically saying he is black and the sun looked, has looked upon him. Right. So basically, if the black people go into the sun, we get blacker. Right. We get darker. Right. So that was a black man. So, so that's another color that's in the Bible. So let's go to the next one. Let's go to Jeremiah 14, 2. So we're going to go to Jeremiah 14 2. Judah mourn it and the gates thereof language they are black onto the ground and the cry of Jerusalem is gone up so Judah looks black onto the ground so Judah has his earthly color his earthly color is black okay or different shades of brown right so let's now to prove that let's go to Genesis 2 and we're going to read from 6 to 7 so it's Genesis 2 and we'll read from 6 to 7 but there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground and the Lord formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. Right. So. Um, so basically he watered the whole face of the ground. Right. So there's a mist that went up. He watered the whole face of the ground and the Lord formed man out of the dust of the ground. So we came from the ground. And what is the ground? The ground is different shades of brown. Right. So the original man, black man, so the original man, Adam was a black man. OK, the original son of God, man, let me say that was a black man. In fact, the original people were all black because they were made in the image of the most high. Right. But this one specifically tells you that he was made from the ground. Right. And so the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, breathed in his nostrils. The breath of life means he gave him his laws. Right. That's pure influence flowing from the Lord. He, he basically spoke to him, gave him his laws, gave him his instructions. Right. And a man became a living soul. So the soul is a spirit that drives a person. Right. So when. In, in the regeneration, when it when it says that the spirit comes back, it is the soul of the man that comes back. Right. Because it's the defining spirit that makes you you. Right. That's the living soul. Right. OK, so we've done that one. So we're now going to go to Lamentation. So let's go to Lamentation. So we're going to go to Lamentation 4, 8. So that's another one in the Bible. So we're going to go to Lamentation 4, 8. And we're going to deal with another place in the Bible where there's color. So when people say that there's no color in the Bible, they don't know what they're talking about. Right. So let's read this one. Lamentation 4, 8. Their visage is blacker than cold. They are not known in the streets. Their skin cleave it to their bones. It is withered. It is become like a stick. Right. So basically the Nazarenes had were going through quite a lot of things. And basically, when you when your body is going through a lot of stress, you're sick or whatever, or you're hungry, uh, black people tend to go darker. Right. We tend to go blacker. Right. So that's why it's saying the visage is blacker than coal. They are not known in the streets. Their skin cleave it to their bones. It is withered. It has become like a stick. Right. So let's now go over to Lamentations 510. Our skin is black like an oven because of the terrible famine. So that kind of solidifies what was said in Lamentations 4.8. Right. But it doesn't take away from the fact that Israelites, because that's who they were, were black people. Right. <laughs> and basically, if we go through famines, you know, or we're sick, we would normally go darker, you know, normally go darker. Right. So. 
let's now go to the final one so we're going to go to Genesis 25 25 so that's where we're going to go next so all these are just color that's in the Bible and when we say color we mean color of the human being right so we're going to go to one last one and we're going to go to Genesis 25 25 and we're going to give the color of a non-Israelite person okay okay so it's it, we're going to deal with a color of a non israelite person so it's 25 25 and the first came out red all over like a hairy garment and they called his name esau so esau was different to jacob right so esau was red right esau is the forefather of the edomite nation right so he was red right so there was jacob and esau jacob was black you know, Jacob had his earthly color, which is different shades of brown, you know, to black, right? And Esau was red. He didn't really have a complexion. Why? Because the blood shows through his skin, right? So his skin was kind of pale looking, but his blood, the blood shows through his skin. So he was, he looked red, right? So that's what the Bible is getting at. So color is in the Bible, right and it does matter because it's in the bible if if the lord didn't want it to matter he wouldn't put it in there right it's as simple as that right um so it's it's basically as simple as that you know but essentially if you want to know who christ is then you have to know what he looks like right so if if, if someone says well the conventional image of christ which is caesar borgia which is what you see on paintings on you know in in films etc etc you know it's a, it's a the image doesn't represent what the revelation of john the revelator revealed right he revealed a man with woolly hair and with dark with black skin right he had black skin and woolly hair so therefore that person who you see in films and on on pictures etc etc is somebody else that doesn't represent the image of christ but it's not just the image of Christ, but it's also the image of God, right? As far as I know, God doesn't show his image to man, right? But he can be seen because uh, Daniel did see him and he hasn't, he, even God himself has an afro, <laughs> right? <laughs> even God himself has an afro, right? But man was made in the image of God, right? And, and Christ and the angels the angels are black people too right and, and therefore he created the first bunch of people looked exactly like he looked right they were a repli repli replica of his image right so therefore color does matter it's all over the bible but it's only when the images are black as the bible says they are black that's when it doesn't matter so that means that you have the spirit of the antichrist because that's what we just read in first john brothers and sisters i hope you were edified shalom